So on behalf of the District of Squamish, I do want to welcome you here. We were hoping to have um, Josh Joseph here, but unfortunately he couldn't make it. Uh, but we wish him all the best, and I do want to acknowledge that we do sit on or stand on unceded territory of the Squamish Nation, and uh, we really value their history and their roots here in, uh, in Squamish. So I want to thank you all for joining us today for our 50th celebration uh, since the amalgamation of the village of Squamish, Mamquam, Brackendale, and of course Paradise Valley, where I live. Uh, in the newly incorporated District of Squamish, which happened in 1964. I want a special welcome to uh, Paula and Christian and... Oh, Paula, Christian and... Graham. 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 <laughs> See, I remember Graham last time, I remember... Some. Anyway, I want to welcome our students from, uh, from Don Ross Secondary School who have contributed some things to the time capsule and will help us load it up later. Thank you, guys. Um, I would like to honor the past mayors of our community. And um, our first mayor in 1964 was George Stanley Clark. Uh, we have F.B. Jacobson, S.R. Bishop, uh, Patrick Brennan, David Stewart, Isidoro Boscario, uh, W.J. Elliott, Egan Tobis, Corrine Lonsdale, who's here with us today. First female mayor, and I think the longest tenure as mayor. No? Oh, Pat Brennan, right. Uh, and of course, Ian Sutherland, Greg Gardner, and Rob Kirkham. Uh, today we're bearing a time capsule that will be dug up in 50 years. And it's amazing to think how, our, how much our community has changed in the last 50 years. And of course, what will Squamish look like in 2064? 2014 was an incredible year for Squamish, and we've tried to capture many of the aspects of the year as possible and, and what we've included in the time capsule. And I know it looks like a bomb, but it's really not. <laughs> I want to thank our operations crew who uh, conceived of this, and this is probably the, the most skookum time capsule I've ever seen. So kudos, guys. So what 2014 saw was, of course, the grand opening of the Sea to Sky Gondola, which is an amazing addition to our tourism industry and really has put Squamish on the map. We had our fifth annual Squamish Valley Music Festival that established uh, the Squamish Valley Music Festival. It's really the summer festival in British Columbia, if not, in, if not Western Canada. And it saw about 35,000 people go on the festival grounds every day, which is quite remarkable for a town of 18 to 20,000 people. Our, we had a, a significant visit from our sister city, uh, Shimizu, um, and they came here in the summer to celebrate our 50th anniversary. We had a new brand for Squamish. We went through a whole community visioning process that basically coalesced our ideals and put them into visuals and a program to actually sort of realize who we are in terms of what we project to the outer world and what we project to ourselves. <clears throat> And I think that this whole process really helped us discover the true spirit of adventure and love of the out of doors that everyone, no matter where you work and who you are, really is grounded and appreciates in Squamish. Um, we chose a developer for the oceanfront lands and hopefully in 2015 we'll see some resolution to that project and, and really realize that exciting potential down there. Um, we had some really exciting announcements in our business park and look forward to uh, amazing uh, op uh, entrepreneurial opportunities that are come out of that come out of the business park. We're already seeing some of that happen with Seven Mesh and Pink Bike and a few of these other um, rec tech and high tech sectors that are moving into our community and, and creating more job employment. Sorka built their mountain bike skills park. We have a growing uh, youthful entrepreneurial demographic. We have one of the youngest communities in British Columbia. And um, by the way we make babies in town, it seems to be getting a lot younger. Um, our new logo and our story really says that we are youthful and we're bold, innovative, entrepreneurial, and we stand tall as we uh, lay down strong uh, foundation for an abundant future in Squamish. While the district is only 50 years young, 2014 has also marked a year-long celebration of 100 years of Squamish's history. This is in recognition of the various mi milestones that tr transpired in 1914, including <coughs> the year we were named Squamish, the year our town site, today's downtown, was considered complete, the year the province passed legislation for the village's incorporation, although we had a few world wars in between there that kind of stymied that actual uh, recognition, 
And while we celebrate these 50 and 100 year milestones, we acknowledge that Squamish First Nations has lived on these lands for time immemorial. And of course, uh, for thousands and thousands of years, they've called this place home and have village sites all over our, our, our Shining Valley. And we're proud of the relationship that we're building with Squamish Nation. They are real true partners in our community and um, look forward to many, many future projects uh, with them as we move forward. I couldn't feel more optimistic about Squamish and I stand here and we've got our, I think pretty much our whole new council is here. Um, there's Councillor Kent and Councillor Race and Councillor Elliott, Councillor Blackman Wolf, Councillor Chappelle and Councillor Pryor is here. On the way. is here somewhere as well. As well as a number of staff and as I mentioned before, uh, former Mayor, Mayor and Councillor uh, Lonsdale. Um, and really I think we're all so in, reinvigorated about the possibilities that, that are here for everyone in our community. And so I think what we're looking forward to as council is really um, helping to drive that in the next four years, but we can't do it alone and we can only do it with participation and the excitement and energies of the entire community. So here's to the next 50 years. Um, and uh, I thought about what it would be like to open this, open this up in 50 years, and I would be in my late 90s. Um, you never know, I might be here. But I thought what a remarkable thing it would be to be able to stand here and open this and see a changed town, because undoubtedly we're going to change, but still see the essence of the nature and the beauty and the surroundings that really have pulled all of us here remain. Um, and I think about what, how special that would be to actually do that. So the young people here, if you put it in your calendars, <laughs> December 2064, it would be awesome if you guys are here to uh, open this up and share some of your experience of what it was like to grow up in Squamish in 2014. I want to thank everyone for coming here. Um, you know, I should ask uh, Mayor Lonsdale to come up and maybe say a few words. Oh, no, you should. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to come up. You can stand right there. Come on, Corrine. Come on. Get going. We can have the past, the present, and the future. Very interesting. interesting. Well, I'm very, I'm, thank you very much, Patty. That's really a surprise to be asked to speak at, at such a momentous occasion. Um, I think I'm really fortunate because I know I can look around this group and know that I have lived in Squamish longer than any one of you. And so many of the changes that have taken place over, well not many, all of the changes that have taken place over the last 50 years, I've been a part of. And so I'll just share one little thing with you. 50 years ago, when we did incorporate, one of the biggest issues that brought the community together and led them to actually vote to become the district of Squamish was the issue of flooding in the valley because individually the people in Brackendale as a, as a little outside unorganized area could not acquire uh, provincial funding or federal funding for uh, flood dikes. works, for, di for dikes, etc. They could only do that if they were part of the bigger entity. Down on this end of town they were wanting to get a sewer system in place. There was no sewer. Everybody had septic tanks. And it was seen that when we got into this expanding our infrastructure, it would be a whole lot easier for the village down here if the outlying parts of the municipality, which included Garibaldi Estates, also contribute to that. So they had the vote and of course here we are today all part of the bigger district of Squamish. So in some ways, you know, that river over there, the Squamish River, which has been a real challenge for us over the years, and still is, is 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 the one um, natural defining defining point that brought us all together. So, yeah, so this is exciting, and I'm glad to have been invited in to be part of it. Thank you. Pat. Thank you very much. All right. Who wants to do this? Corrine, come and do this.